Good morning. It is Friday, October 11th, and I'm up a little early today. Uh, it's I got up a little after six to let the dog out, and um, so now I'm just kind of, my husband and I are getting started on the day. He's taking a shower, and he and my, our son have some plans to work on some projects today. I'm not sure what all I'm doing today, uh, but I will hopefully get a little knitting time and I'll check in with you soon. Hi, welcome back to Vlogtober. I have been recording a few things the last few days, but this is the first night since last week that I've not been out late. <laughs> So I just didn't get things put together into a video. Fingers crossed I'll get it done tonight. I don't even know what time it is, seven something. But on Friday evening, my husband and I went out. We hadn't had a date night out in quite a while. So we went to dinner. There's a restaurant in Aiken called Prime. It's a really nice restaurant. They have um, very good steaks, but they have other stuff too. Uh, but it's kind of pricey, so we don't go there very often. It's It's been... I don't even know, probably a couple of years. But anyway, we had dinner there and then we went to see the new Beetlejuice movie. It's gotten fairly good reviews, so if you like the original, you might like it, uh, but we weren't that crazy about it. But I'll talk about it in a little bit, if I remember. <laughs> then Saturday, Good morning. It is Saturday morning, October 12th. We are going to a wedding about two and a half hours away. We'll leave just after lunch and hopefully we'll get some decent pictures as we're heading to toward the upstate uh, for a family wedding. I am making a lemon cake for church tomorrow. We have uh, a church dinner, so the church will provide meat and drinks, I think. And then we just bring sides and desserts. So I'm making a lemon cake and it is a box of lemon cake mix, a can of lemon pie filling, and three eggs mixed together, baked in a bunt pan. And it makes the best, most moist, delicious cake. It's so good. You can do all kinds of combinations with this. You can do spice cake with apple pie filling. A particular favorite here is chocolate cake with cherry pie filling. Strawberry would work well too. Uh, what else? Strawberry with strawberry filling. All of those make really delicious cakes. Yellow cake, I think I've done yellow cake with peach maybe. The reason I haven't used blueberry with anything is just, I should just try it for our family. I think it would just look weird <laughs> if you mixed it with like lemon cake. I think it would taste really good, but blueberry pie filling would, I think just turn it kind of a weird green. One possibility is to do the lemon cake and just put a few fresh blueberries in it. Um, I think that might work better than the, the pie filling. So anyway, I thought I'd toss that out there. It's a really um, a pretty easy way to have a really interesting cake for dessert. You can do it without the eggs. It makes a more dense cake, but it will work even without the eggs. So that's something you can keep in your pantry. All right, I'm gonna carry on with my day and I'm hoping to get some good footage while we're out this afternoon. We left right after lunch to go to a wedding in Anderson. And it's about, from where we are, it's about two and a half hours roughly north of us, north and maybe a little west. Uh, my cousin's daughter got married, so we were up there. And at first I thought, I don't know if I know anybody other than like my cousin and her family. And, but there were actually a couple other people there that, that I knew, so that was really fun. And then yesterday, Sunday, we went to church. We had a church dinner, so the church provides the meat. It was beef stew and fried chicken, I think. And then we brought sides and dessert. We've not been able to do these in quite a while because our church had grown a good bit and we just didn't have room to invite people. We said it'd be really kind of bad to say, yay, we have dinner, but then there's no room for you to stay. <laughs> but we just recently finished 
adding on to the back of our building and it's it really is just a huge meeting room there's electricity but there's no kitchen back there is no water or anything but it's attached to our building where we do have those things so this just gives us a giant space where we can seat i think it's close to 200 people there for dinner and uh yeah so it was our first um church-wide dinner like that in i'm not even sure quite a long time a year or year and a half i don't even know a long time so that was really nice but then the only day we could at least a majority of us go to the state fair was Sunday. So we went to dinner at church and then we went to the South Carolina State Fair and then we stayed there until about 9.30 Sunday night. It was really crowded. It's kind of a reminder of why we in the past have avoided going on weekends. But I mean, people were generally pretty pleasant and uh, and we had a good time. Again, I, we, my husband usually sees people he knows. Anywhere we go, people know him. But in this case, the person he saw did recognize him first, but it's somebody that we've both known for a really long time. Uh, she's the sister of a high school friend. It was actually a guy I dated in high school, his youngest sister. And um, so we're all, we all get along fine. We don't see each other all that much, but everybody gets along fine. And so it was really fun to see her. She crochets, she does a lot of crocheted toys, that kind of stuff. And she had a couple of things entered. I think she won for both. I think she got maybe a first for one and second for the other. It was a little crocheted Statue of Liberty and I think the other were, they were pumpkins. So it was fun to talk um, fiber art with her. And I got to, I don't think I'd ever met her husband before. I know of him because of just communicating online, but it was really fun to meet him in person. So that was pretty nice. We enjoyed, for the most part, we enjoyed the fair. It was just really crowded. It was kind of warm and, you know. And then today, I started to record some stuff this morning. I'm like, eh, it's Monday. I'm doing chores and laundry. So not really very exciting today. My plan for dinner tonight was to make red beans and rice. And I thought, I've got dried red beans. I can do them in the Instant Pot. We'll be, it'll be great. I started cooking. Oh, by the way, I needed some green peppers, which I have just like two more on my plant, my pepper plant. And I went out and I got those. I was sauteing the onions and the peppers. I went to measure my um, vegetable broth and my dried red beans. They turned out to be pinto beans. Now, it probably would have tasted fine with pinto beans, but I really wanted to be authentic red beans and rice. And you can't really do that with pinto beans. So I started to contact a couple of family. My husband was out. My daughter-in-law was out. My son-in-law was out. I contacted my daughter-in-law. She would have picked them up, but she was going to be back later. My husband was going to potentially, but he again was a little later than I anticipated. And my son-in-law actually got back sooner than I thought. So I didn't get a message out to him because any one of the three of them would have picked him up. What I did was use just canned red beans that I did have. And so it was onions and green peppers sauteed in olive oil. In the process of making this, I knocked over a brand new, like had just opened bottle of olive oil. It spilled on my counter and onto my dress. By the way, Dawn Power Wash Spray got the grease out in case you happen to spill olive oil on yourself. Uh, but anyway, onions and peppers sauteed in olive oil. I then ha I had a carton, I think it's four cups of vegetable broth, but chicken broth would have worked great too. And I think I put in three cans of red beans because I was feeding seven people. And the four cups of vegetable broth plus two cups of rice and some Cajun seasoning. I think that was it and cooked it in the instant pot. Since the beans were already cooked, I set it on the rice setting to cook and it did great. So we had that. My husband did pick up salad stuff for me. So <laughs> we had that with the salad for dinner. Uh, what else today? I think that was most of it. It was just, it was just a fairly ordinary day. Uh, although just as I sat down to record a few minutes ago, my I'm recording on my phone and my phone rang. My daughter-in-law called. She was up 
on our hill checking on goats and big dogs and she heard what sounded like a big group of coyotes fairly close so she was letting us know she was coming back down with their dog uh, her dog their dog's really big so she was relatively safe up there even if the coyotes had come around but it, we are worry a little bit about our goats our, our big dogs are out there so it's should be fine but coyotes are creepy so well let's talk just a little bit about some stuff that I've been meaning to tell you for a while I'm going to start by saying one of the reasons I'm sitting on the floor in my bedroom is that my house is in chaos I mentioned briefly that we have repair work that needs to be done this is not storm related this was a leak that happened prior to that there is a hole in my ceiling up here from a leak that was upstairs part of our upstairs bathroom got ripped out in order to get everything dry because we were starting to get mold it was pretty pretty icky up there but we got people in they did their mitigation so we got everything dry and so we're good the on the um, stopping the leak and getting things dry but then you have to go back and repair I'm gonna turn this I can't remember if I recorded for you but you can see I have a hole in my ceiling and right above that is my, uh, it's my well my daughter's older so I'm in my daughter's room it was her room when she was living at home there's a bedroom and bathroom up there but now she and her husband are staying there while they're in the process of selling their house in Nebraska and finding a house here so it means that everything is just in turmoil my bedroom what I'm looking at a mess because we had to pack everything up move our bed out into our son's old room so that we're not sleeping in here with all of the dust and such this has been about six weeks and we've been waiting for the company to do the repairs they were out of electricity because of the storm I don't know for how long and it took them a couple of weeks to actually call us back so I'm really glad my husband just kept every couple of days he would just call him he's very diplomatic he just kept calling him and finally today they said oh yeah we'll get to you later this week <laughs> and he's going really they said yeah oh you haven't picked out your vanity yet and we said nobody's talked to us we don't know what we need so I'm supposed to hear from him about that tomorrow so fingers crossed within a week or so the work will be done to get everything repaired the the tile floor upstairs is almost certainly going to have to be completely completely repaired completely replaced it's probably 20 to 30 percent of it already ripped up down like down to subfloor up there but we're getting there we're getting there y'all I'll be so glad to have our house put back together so let's talk about happier stuff I had said last week maybe that I ordered some stuff from um, friends and fiber works that's Lisa Mackey in um, it's not Fletcher Candler North Carolina she is kind of the face of SAF in a lot of ways there's a whole board so there's a lot of people involved but that's her shop and I don't know she and her husband I'm not sure who all owns it but right after the storm I placed an order wasn't sure how long it would take to get here but it sh shipped really fast so this is the book that I bought because the title of it was just what I needed to buy after the storm hope um, 12 designs and let me get to I think there's a page with pictures of each one a couple of, them of the photos are duplicates but look at these sweaters are they gorgeous I'm trying to see if you can you see it all I can't see myself in this uh, I think they're really beautiful I'm not sure what I'm ambitious enough to make there are a couple of cabled ones that I think are beautiful I'm just not sure if I am up to it let's see if I can find the bigger pictures of them I think there's big pictures like look at that look at those cables that focusing it wants to focus on me I'm flattered but it's not helpful so I like that one that is definitely a sweater that I would wear bulky cabled sweater really pretty and there's a, a cabled pullover sweater that I like there it is this one. 
You can see that one. And this, you can kind of see the detail of those cables. I think that's really pretty. So, yeah, this is called Hope. It's by Kim Hargreaves. And I'm just going to take a little time to study that later. If I make something, great. If not, I'll just enjoy the inspiration. I have worked some on the Sabasco, I think that's right, Amy Herzog vest. I am knitting this on straights, which I haven't done in ages. So you knit it in pieces and then seam it. This is the back. So you have this, I think it's called a daisy stitch. And then there's some shaping. I um, might be able to see through here. So you pull in and then go back out. So I'm on the increases. But I will knit the back. I, once I finish this set of increases, I think it's onto the armholes pretty quick. And then I do the left and right fronts. Because it is a vest, there's not sleeves. There is some finishing at the arms, I think. Maybe. I'm not sure by the picture. But anyway, I'll get to it when I get to it. <laughs> I'm enjoying it okay, but I'm not sure how I feel about knitting on straights because I've had some pain in my thumb through here. I had something uh, a couple of years ago called de Quer veins tendonitis or something. I think it was actually in my right hand and it was a similar place. But what what they did to test for is like I think I put my thumb in like that and then they pushed down on it and it immediately hurt. So that's the you can look up the test for it. This doesn't feel like that. It's when I'm working I can feel it, but I don't have the same pain when I like push down on it. So not sure what that means, but um, yeah, I'm trying to kind of take it easy. I may have to get, um, what am I trying to say? The connected needles with the cord, connected with the cord. Uh, what am I, um, you're all yelling it at me. Anyway, I think I would, that might actually be better because I'm not having to carry the whole weight of the project on the needle and that might help a little bit. This is the yarn. I bought it at the same time as the book, Broco Vintage. It is acrylic wool and nylon. Can you see that sort of? The color is just a number, 5109. So it's a like a medium gray. And it's actually really nice to work with. I think I'll like it. I'm pretty sure it's it's machine wash, right? Yeah, machine wash. So it'll be really easy care. And so I'm enjoying working on that. I have worked a little bit on my Soft Whispers. That's the name of it, right? The Lisa K. Ross shawl. I am almost through the middle section. I've got a little bit to go before I move on to the uh, striping in the mini skeins again. So I've made some progress on that, but it's not that interesting because it was just that uh, garter section in the middle. But once I get to adding the colors again, I'll pull it back out for you. All right, I've been chatting for almost 16 minutes. Okay, my son-in-law and daughter went to Spokane, Washington over the weekend. It was a memorial service for one of, uh, one of my son-in-law's friends. But they brought back presents because my daughter is very much a gifts person. So, and maybe he is too. But anyway, they brought back gifts. I got a gigantic like big as my head coffee mug. I used it this morning and it was wonderful. Plenty of room for whipped cream. Uh, but yeah, really, really glad they had a safe trip. They flew out on, they were supposed to leave on Thursday and there was a problem with their, actually with their Uber getting there, but they were able to rebook, they book, they were out there for the service on Friday, and then they flew back Saturday. They got in late Saturday night. Well, I'm going to hush so I can go work on editing. I need to check on Lacey because she is in there. She's with my family, but 
uh, I had had her on the porch. It was getting dark, so it was starting to get cool. And um, with the coyotes out there, I don't think they would bother her actually up on our porch, but I thought it might be a little scary for her. So we brought her in and she and Bentley have chew treats. So I think that'll keep them busy at least for a little bit. All right, hopefully I will do a better job tomorrow documenting what's going on. I think I'm going grocery shopping probably with my daughter-in-law. So that might be kind of fun tomorrow. All right, everybody, I hope you're doing well. We are halfway through October. Can you believe it? It goes so fast. Take care, everybody. Thank you.